Welcome to the video lecture on the course BLSI Design. Myself Kalevani from EC Department of B.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. In this lecture, let's see about the introduction on BLSI Design. VLSI stands for Very Large Scale Integration. Let's start with what is an IC. IC is an integrated circuit which is a semiconductor device or a chip into which more number of electronic devices or circuits can be built into it. Advantages of an IC over discrete circuits are the physical size is made extremely small, the weight is very less, it is more reliable, it consumes very less power and also it has increased operating speed. Disadvantages of an IC are the first point or the first drawback is that the inductors or transformers cannot be fabricated into a single chip and also it can handle only limited power. Advances of IC technology has led to creation of many new electronic or microelectronic devices that are used in applications of communication and computing systems. So evolution of IC technology, here the evolution of IC technology is based on the complexity of the circuit. What is complexity? The number of transistors that are built into a single chip is the complexity. So it started with small scale integration that is SSI where only 10 transistors were integrated into a single chip. Then was medium scale integration MSI where 10 to 100 transistors were integrated into a single chip. Next came large scale integration LSI where 10,000 transistors can be integrated or built into a single chip. Next was the VLSI very large scale integration up to 100,000 transistors were able to integrate or built into a, into a single chip. ULSI stands for ultra large scale integration where 1 million up to 1 million devices can be fabricated into a single chip. GSI is giga scale integration where more than millions of transistors can be built in a single IC. MOS transistors. Silicon is a basic semiconducting material for a fabrication of an IC. MOSFET which is metal oxide semiconductor transistor is a very far most commonly used transistor for the design of analog and digital circuits. MOS structure is composed of conducting and insulating material which is in a form of sandwich like structure. Basic types of MOS transistors are NMOS transistor and PMOS transistor. So let's start with NMOS structure. So in an NMOS transistor the substrate will be a P substrate. Substrate can also be called as bulk or body of the transistor. Now in this P substrate N plus diffusions are made to take the source in the drain. So we have silicon dioxide which acts as an insulating material over which polysilicon gate terminal is taken. So when you compare this NMOS with PMOS structure, we can see an N substrate into which P plus diffusions are made to take the source in the drain terminal. So again here you have a silicon dioxide which is an insulating material again over which the polysilicon gate terminal is taken. Here we see the symbols of NMOS and PMOS transistor. MOS transistor in general have three terminals, source, drain and gate terminal. Apart from these three terminals, we also say that bulk is considered to be a terminal. So from now on, we can say MOS transistor has four terminals, source, drain, gate and bulk terminal. So first let's see about the NMOS transistor. So here the gate terminal is said to be a controlling terminal. Why it is called as control terminal? MOS transistor which acts as a switch. So here the switch operation is based on the input given to the gate terminal. In an NMOS transistor, if the gate is given as zero, it is off. That is the switch is off. If gate is equal to one, the end switch is on. In PMOS transistor, the inverse operation takes place. If gate is equal to zero, the PMOS switch will be on. And if gate is equal to one, the PMOS switch will be off. Next. Let's move on to modes of operation of MOS transistor. Here, when we talk about MOS transistor, 
two voltages are to be considered for the operation of a mass transistor. One is the gate voltage, which we also term it to be gate to source voltage. And the next is drain to source voltage or the drain voltage. The gate to source voltage is responsible for the formation of channel between the source and the drain. Drain to source voltage is responsible for the movement or drift of the carriers via the channel. In this modes of operation, we are going to see how a channel is being formed with respect to the gate voltage. Now let's see about the modes of operation of MOS transistors. So here in this modes of operation, we are going to see how a channel is being formed between the source and the train terminal. There are three modes of operation, accumulation mode, depletion mode and inversion mode. The condition for accumulation mode is the gate voltage is less than zero. When the gate voltage is less than zero, the charge carriers are accumulated in their own place that is in P substrate the majority holes are being placed or accumulated and in polysilicon layer the negative ions are accumulated. In the depletion mode, the gate voltage is made greater than zero but it is less than the threshold voltage. What does mean by threshold voltage? The minimum voltage required for the conductivity to take place is called as threshold voltage. So in the depletion mode, the gate voltage is less than the threshold voltage but it is made positive. Due to this positive gate supply, the holes in the P substrate are repelled and create a space beneath the gate oxide layer. This space is called as depletion layer. Next comes the inversion mode where the gate voltage is greater than the threshold voltage. When the gate voltage is made more positive, this depletion layer is occupied by the negative ions where these negative ions are the minority carriers present in the P substrate that are being attracted towards the positive gate terminal. In the accumulation mode, this layer was filled up by positive carriers and in the inversion mode, this layer is being occupied by the negative ions and so it is called as N-channel MOSFET. Similarly, if it is a P-channel MOSFET, the depletion layer will be filled up with positive carriers. So apart from the NMOS and PMOS transistor classification, the basic classification of a MOS transistor is enhancement mode and depletion mode. So what is an enhancement mode and depletion mode? Even when gate voltage is zero, if the transistor conducts, it is depletion mode. In enhancement mode, only with respect to gate voltage, the channel is formed after which the conductivity takes place with respect to drain to source voltage. The diagrammatic representation of the enhancement mode and depletion mode transistors are shown over here. In the depletion mode, we can see that a built-in channel is being formed. So even when the gate voltage is zero, in the depletion mode, that is conductivity. But whereas in enhancement mode, gate voltage has to be given in order to form the channel between the source and the drain, after which the drain source voltage has to be given for the conductivity to take place. So next comes the regions of operation of MOSFET. There are three different regions of MOSFET, cutoff region, linear region and saturated region. Here these different regions are based upon the gate source voltage and the drain source voltage. First coming to the cutoff region, VG the condition is VG that is the gate voltage is less than the threshold voltage. When gate voltage is less than the threshold voltage, no channel is being formed. So if there is no channel, the drain current is equal to zero. Next comes linear region. So the condition for linear region is the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage, which means the channel is formed between the source and the drain. And the second condition is that drain source voltage is less than VGS minus VT. What is this VGS minus VT? This is called as gate effective voltage. When VDS is less than VGS minus VT, as VDS increases, there is an increase in the drain to source current. Here the point to be noted is when VDS is supplied, the charge carriers in the channel move from source to drain, thereby the current flow will be from drain to source. 
Next comes the saturated region. So the condition for the saturated region is the gate source voltage is obviously greater than the threshold voltage which means the channel is being formed and the drain to source voltage is greater than the gate effective voltage VGS minus VT. In this case the drain to source voltage is more positive leading to a increase in the depletion layer towards the drain terminal and thereby this makes the channel narrow towards the drain terminal. This narrow or the channel length modulation makes the current to be constant in the saturated region. So this is the summary table that shows the different regions of operation with different conditions and also the drain current is being tabulated. In the cutoff region, the IDS that is the drain to source current is equal to zero. For the linear region, IDS is given as mu into C naught X W by L VGS minus VT VDS minus VDS square by two. Where mu n is mobility of the electron c naught x is the gate oxide capacitance w and l are width and length of the channel vgs as we know it is gate to source voltage vt the threshold voltage and vds is drain to source voltage next comes the saturated region in saturation ids is equal to 1 by 2 mu n c naught x w by l vgs minus vt the whole square now let's move on to cmos inverter complementary metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor it is a technology which is widely used nowadays for many applications cmos inverter which is also termed to be static cmos is implemented using pmos and an nmos so that is pmos connected in series with nmos the source of the pmos is connected to vdd and the source of nmos is connected to vss vss in the sense it is ground the gate terminal of pmos and nmos is connected to the input which is termed to be vn the drain of the pmos and nmos is connected to the output terminal which is termed as v out here pmos is called as pull up transistor and nmos is called as pull down transistors Working of a CMOS inverter, so when Vin is equal to 0, PMOS is on and NMOS is off leading Vout to be equal to VDD. PMOS is said to be a pull up transistor because it tends to make Vout equal to logic 1 or VDD. When Vin is equal to 1, PMOS transistor becomes off and NMOS transistor is made on making Vout equal to 0 which is again logic 0. Now, NMOS is said to be a pull down transistor because it pulls down the output voltage to zero. So, since the CMOS inverter, as we see, for the input zero, the output is made as one, and for input one, the output is made as zero. So, which acts as a NOT gate or an inverter, and so the name CMOS inverter. So far, we have seen the introduction of the VLSI design course, and further, the topics that would be covered in this course are. The DC characteristics of CMOS inverter, fabrication of CMOS inverter, design of logic gates using CMOS, then pass transistor and transmission gate logic. Transmission gate logic is where we get strong logic 1 or strong logic 0 at the output which is again made of a CMOS. Then the design of sequential and combinational logic circuits using the transmission gates. Next we will see about the different types of CMOS that is the drawback of static CMOS which led to the development of dynamic CMOS structures and what are the drawbacks of dynamic CMOS structure which led to the development of domino CMOS. And next we will see about basic arithmetic blocks or you call it to be sub blocks for the digital circuit design example adders multipliers multipliers may be serial or parallel multiplier that is array multipliers and different dividers at last the course is completed by a hardware description language which is a very low code using which we design the hardware using the functionality or the structure thank you